This video is about causal LTI systems described by linear constant coefficient differential equations. So I would be using a second order circuit to explain what LCCDE is, that is linear constant coefficient differential equations, and how we can find an impulse response of second order or for that sake, any order system. Causal LTI systems, depending on the nature of system, that is uh, whether it's a continuous time system or a discrete time system. So these can be categorized into either differential equations or difference equations for discrete time systems. Particularly, we are interested in an input output relationship, which is in terms of linear constant coefficient differential equations, uh, in terms of continuous time systems, or linear constant coefficient difference equations, in terms of discrete time systems. So, we would be focusing presently on differential equations. So this is LCCDE. These are just differential equations. Uh, let us explain further with the help of one circuit. So say we have an input that is x of t. And next we have an inductor followed by a resistor and a capacitor. And the circuit closes and the output is in terms of loop current that is y of t. So let us say that the inductor L is 1 Henry, the resistor is 3 ohm, and the capacitance is 1 by 2, 1 by 2 farad. Now using KVL, You can say that the voltage across the inductor VL plus voltage across the resistor VR plus the capacitor should be equivalent to the input voltage that is X of T. And using the current laws, from here we can express this in terms of L D by DT Y of T. So this is simply one, so we would have D by DT Y. From the Ohm's law, we would have 3 times the current that is y of t plus 1 by c uh, and the integration so this would be equal to 2 times minus infinity to time t y of tau d tau and this should be equal to x of t or simply we can differentiate it one more time so this would become d by dt the second derivative plus 3 d by dt y hence we have an implicit differential equation in which the output is related with the differentials of output and a differential of input x of t so presently this is a second order differential equation but assume that we have an nth order differential equation we can express that in terms of a summation so these are the constant coefficients over here and we can say this is a n and we have a derivative at the output so this would be d by dt and the derivative is the nth derivative so we can write an n here and the summation is from 0 to capital n right so n is identifying the order of this differential equation at the output similarly for the input side we again have b m here b m is the coefficient represented over here 
differential d by dt mth differential mth differential of the input x of t and the summation is starting from n equal to 0 to capital m note that this is x of t and hence this is our y of t just as a quick summary this is the constant coefficient a n and we have some of these constant coefficients linked with specific uh, differential order for the output and they equate to uh, the summation of constant coefficients linked with the differential of the input right we can express this whole thing as a, a polynomial and we can name it as q of s a polynomial in terms of the input y of t and similarly p of s in terms of the input x of t so n and m they identify the order of a differential equation and a n and b n are the constant coefficients so from here and coming back to our original circuit so this is uh, simply second order circuit so the n is set to 2 over here we can simply say that d by dt we can set it as s so this would be simply s square plus 3s plus 2 y of e is equal to s x of t so for the second order system or for an nth order system the eventual goal is to find the expression of output that is y of t that is an explicit expression in terms of some functions so the usual way to do it is you can have an output y of t and this is equivalent to y homogeneous solution of t plus y particular solution of t right so y h of t that is when you set the input equal to zero that is you set x of t equal to zero so this would give you y h of t but for the particular solution we are not interested in zero input uh, response but we are interested in zero state response this is state values or zero and this equality holds from the linearity which is mentioned over here so for the particular solution uh, since the states are input that doesn't mean that the input is zero and you would need an input to find a particular solution and say that input in our case is simply ke3t so this is our input so therefore we are saying that explicit expression of y of t can be found in terms of uh, the summation of zero input response and zero state response so it can also be found by means of an impulse response that is you can somehow find an impulse response h of t and then convolve it with the input x of t mentioned over here so presently we are interested in the impulse response h of t and as you know the impulse response characterizes the system fully so if we are able to find h of t we understand the system and for any given input be it ke 3t or a sinusoidal function or um, any other kind of function so we would be able to find the output y of t but how can we find the impulse response h of t for this particular case so as in this case we are saying that the order of an output the differential order of an output is greater than the differential order of an input this is the case in most of the circuits and most of the systems because most stable systems tend to be in this uh, form where n is greater than m right so we would be looking specifically in this case that is when your n the order of differential for an output is greater than m so in this case the impulse response h of t is in terms of the homogeneous solution 
y h of t but this homogeneous solution has to be differentiated with respect to the order of input right p of s so p of s and finally u of t because we are looking into causal LTI systems over here so homogeneous solution the order of differential of the input that is this m and p of s and u of t note that if the order of output is equal to one right so this would mean that the homogeneous solution y h of e should be in the form e e s t where c is the constant coefficient and this is a function or an eigenfunction that we would need so we're using this kind of a solution because in the given circuit over here right we are interested in combining these in terms of a polynomial form q of s or simply in this form right where we can extract out y of t and the differential and constant coefficients can be combined together okay. so this is only possible in terms of an exponential function that is if we have a function e s t if if we pass it through a linear system that may perform differentiation integration or any other kind of a, a linear operation so the outcome would still be in terms of an exponential function and so say if this was differential so you would have s e s t and if it was integrator so you would have one over s e s t so we can say this there's a constant coefficient so this constant coefficient is just affecting the amplitude and it is not dependent on time so it's a constant coefficient and the function retains itself so we call this as eigenfunction and the value that scales this function we can call it as an eigenvalue So hence we are assured that the homogeneous solution can only be in this form in terms of an exponential because it retains its shape so we're saying if n is equal to one that is it's a first order system so in this case we only need the solution of this one right and for that we need to find the value of c so we can simply put y h of zero that is we set the time equal to zero so this is equivalent to e that is this expression e s e but e is equal to zero this means that this whole thing would be equal to one and we set this equal to one next if we have the second order system in that case we would have two expressions that is the homogeneous solution would be in terms of e1 e s1 t plus e2 e f2 t so we would need to find c1 and c2 and for that we would need two expressions so the first one is simply you set y of h equal to zero first one is y of h at time instant zero you set it equal to zero and next you can take a derivative of the homogeneous solution and then evaluate it at time zero and set it equal to one and similarly for higher orders the coefficients would increase and the overall expressions would increase for example for the third order when n is equal to 3 y or h of 
so y h evaluated at 0 would be 0 the first derivative would again be equal to 0 but the second derivative would be equal to 1 and so on but in short in order to get the solution of the output y of t we need to find the homogeneous solution y h of t so let's proceed to that so we have reached until 1 2 3 4 right so from 4 to 5 we set the input equal to 0 to find y h of t so hence we have s square plus 3 s plus 2 y of t equal to 0 so we can take the roots of this so this would be equivalent to s plus 2 and s plus 1 y of t equal to 0. So as mentioned previously, the solution has to be in terms of an exponential form. We say that our homogeneous solution y h of t, this is a second order system, as mentioned over here. So our solution is simply e 1 e s t plus c2 s1 t and c2 e s2 t so let us plug in the values of uh, s from this expression so this would be equivalent to c1 e e minus e plus okay this is coming from here so c2 e minus 2 t and this is our y h of t so in order to find c1 and c2 we need two expressions the first one can be obtained by evaluating this expression say this is our first expression so evaluating this at zero so we will get one expression the second one is taking the differential of this one and then evaluating at zero so, so say we want to differentiate this this would simply be minus c1 e minus t minus 2 e to e minus 2t this is our second expression so using this in this we can say that 0 is equal to e1 so if time is 0 so this would become 1 and simply this would also become 1 this is simply c1 plus c2 and from here uh, if we set the time equivalent to 0 the first differential should be equal to 1 so this would be 1 and and so this would be minus e1 minus 2 e2 if you simply add this so this would cancel with this one and you would have e2 equal to minus 1 if you plug c2 over here in the first expression so c1 would be equal to 1 so uh, for the homogeneous solution so we plug the value of c1 and c2 in 1 So hence from here we have h of t y h of t which is over here this is simply e minus t e minus e minus 2t but we also have p of s and for the present case our p of s is simply s right where s is d by dt u of t as this would be equivalent to minus e minus t plus 2 e minus 2 t 
and this whole thing is u of t multiplied with the instep function u of t so this is the impulse response of so hence this is the impulse response of this circuit this means that this impulse response characterizes this system and for any given input which over here is ke3t but if it is any other any arbitrary input we can find the output y of t so for the completion of this particular example let us perform the convolution and find out the output that is an explicit expression of y of t so for the convolution y of t we have an impulse response h of t and we are convolving it with the input x of t to obtain y of t right so we know that the impulse response h of t is basically starting from zero and moving in this direction because of some so say whatever it is it would be something like if we have 2e minus 2t and minus we would have some sort of this summation some sort of an expression which is basically right sided starting at zero and moving towards the right side at the same time the input x of t this is h of t and then we have an input x of t that is k e 3 t so for causal we may write this with u of t this means that this is simply something like that right so for convolution we're going to flip this and then rotate it right so anything after flipping less than zero is zero right note that this would be flipped into this form and this is e so as we move this t towards right side we would have some area and hence the integration is starting from zero terminating at t we have k e 3 this will become t minus tau and this will simply be minus e minus tau plus 2e minus 2 tau d tau you may solve uh, this expression first and then you can solve this one and eventually add so finally i'm just writing the outcome over here that would be So hence we have find an explicit expression of output y of t uh, by means of convolution and finding the impulse response so we took an example of the second order system and converted into a differential equation which is over here so this is a second order differential equation but we can have an nth order differential equation so, so these are the constant coefficients for the output and the input and we have expressed them in terms of polynomials q of s and p of s and this is possible if the homogeneous solution is in terms of exponential right a signal because the eigenfunction remains the same and the eigenvalue is just scaling uh, after the operation of the system or the transformation from the system and we have mentioned that uh, for this present case the impulse response is simply e mi uh, minus e minus t plus 2 e minus 2 t u of t so from this impulse response we can also determine that the system is uh, stable and causal and from the impulse response we can eventually find the output y of t by convolving the impulse response with the input x of t